You're watching ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia, and I'm attending the first ever open video conference at New York University. The timing is eerie, for right now there's a crackdown going on in Iran, and while the foreign journalists have largely been expelled, the people have turned to open media to get the word out. I think the events in Iran highlight how important it is to have this kind of media at our disposal. But there's no guarantee open media will remain open. Online we're relying on things like YouTube, like uh, Blip TV, Hulu, all of these are great services, but they're very easy, uh, they're points of control, they're easy to shut off. And so when we're in delicate political situations with uh, governments that may or may not want their citizens to be able to communicate freely with one another, these can be turned off a lot more easily and, and obscured from people in certain places. And so I think in Guatemala we've seen recently, um, there's been a situation where they actually uh, blocked Twitter completely. And so I think we're seeing examples of why we need uh, more decentralized uh, systems for especially video and for other forms of communication online too. And decentralized communication is what open media is all about. Open media is uh, a horizontal platform uh, where people exchange uh, things equally as opposed to the client-server relationship, which is what the corporations who are now trying to close down the internet would like uh, to, to happen, which is that they serve content to consumers. But wait a minute, who owns open media? And how open is it? Aren't these proprietary technologies? A lot of the excitement that people have around Twitter and YouTube and, and Facebook right now and the fact that information is uh, so accessible through those companies um, I, I wish that more of that were tempered with um, skepticism. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen with any of these companies. And when they go offline, so does your content. So is this open media mania mainly hype? It's interesting. I, I, I read um, a couple of things that pointed out that a lot of the protests have been organized primarily not using these, these new media techniques. So there's certainly a certain amount of buzz around it that perhaps is a little bit overestimated. Or perhaps the videos, texts, and tweets coming from Iran prove that these new tools really can have an impact. I think the point is decentralization of power overall with technology. I mean, that's the promise of technology, right, is that everything is going to be better. It's sort of the modernist take on technology. So as we advance technologically, our lives will improve.